Hi everyone, I'm Mary Thompson. And before I continue, please like and subscribe to hear my story. The events I'm about to share changed my life forever, and I want others to learn from what I went through. My life was perfect until six months ago. Dad adopted me when I was five. And for nine amazing years, it was just us. He'd always make time for our Friday movie nights, no matter how busy his company kept him. Princess, he'd say, you're the best thing that ever happened to me. Those words made me feel so special, so wanted. Then came the charity gala. That's where he met her, Victoria. At first, I was excited. She was beautiful, charming, and seemed to genuinely care about me. Oh, James, she's even more precious than you described, she'd gush, bringing me little presents and taking me shopping. Mary, honey, how would you feel about Victoria becoming a permanent part of our family? Dad asked one evening. I remember nodding enthusiastically. Six months later, they were married in our backyard. Victoria wore white, and I was the flower girl. Everything seemed perfect. But things started changing so subtly I barely noticed at first. Dad's company was expanding, keeping him at the office later and later. Your father works so hard for us, Victoria would say, her voice sweet as honey when others were around. But when we were alone, that sweetness vanished. Mary, darling, could you try to be a bit less... clingy with your father? He's quite stressed with work, and your constant need for attention isn't helping. Her words stung, but I tried to understand. The Friday movie nights became less frequent. Daddy, are we watching movies tonight? Oh, sweetheart, Victoria and I have a dinner meeting. Next week, okay? But next week never came. Victoria always had something planned. Charity events, business dinners, social obligations. We need to maintain certain appearances, Mary, you understand, don't you? My grades started slipping. Math, usually my best subject, became a struggle. I couldn't focus, couldn't sleep. Every night I'd lie awake, listening to Victoria's perfect laugh floating up from downstairs as she entertained guests. James, I'm worried about Mary. I'd hear her say in that concerned voice she used around Dad. She seems so withdrawn lately. Maybe she needs counseling? But in private. Your father only adopted you out of pity, you know. If you can't maintain proper grades and behavior, well, there are plenty of institutions for troubled adopted children. The neighbors, the Wilsons, would wave when I sat on my window seat. Sometimes Mrs. Wilson would give me concerned looks, especially when she heard Victoria's voice rising through the open windows. Mary. What have you done to this kitchen? Your father works hard to provide this beautiful home. And this is how you repay him? I stopped eating dinner with them, claiming homework. The truth was, I couldn't bear watching Victoria play the perfect wife and stepmother while I sat there, feeling like an outsider in my own home. Dad barely noticed, too caught up in Victoria's carefully woven web of social obligations and business expansions. Just remember... Victoria whispered one night as she passed my room. Your father's happiness depends on you being a good, quiet girl. You wouldn't want to ruin that, would you? The morning started like any other, but Victoria's tactics were getting worse. I was pouring cereal when she walked in, deliberately bumping into me. The bowl crashed to the floor. James, come quickly, Mary's having another one of her episodes. Dad rushed in, looking worried. What happened? I don't know what's wrong with her lately. She just threw her breakfast everywhere. I didn't. You bumped into me on purpose. My voice cracked. See what I mean? These accusations. Victoria's eyes welled with perfectly timed tears. I'm trying so hard to be a mother to her. Dad sighed, running his hands through his hair. Mary, please. I can't deal with this right now. The Miller account is... Of course, darling. Victoria cooed. Go to work. I'll handle things here. Once he left, her smile turned cold. Clean it up. And Mary, remember what I said about institutions for troubled adoptees? They have excellent facilities for disturbed children. The stress was getting to me. I started wetting my bed, something I hadn't done since I was six. Victoria found the wet sheets one morning. Well, well, looks like someone's reverting to baby behavior. She yanked the sheets off. Wouldn't your little friends love to know about this? 
Oh, wait, you don't have any friends anymore, do you? She was right. My best friend Lisa stopped coming over after Victoria told her mom I was going through a difficult phase and needed space. At school, Mrs. Chen, my counselor, called me in. Mary, your grades have dropped significantly. Is everything okay at home? Everything's fine, I mumbled, Victoria's threats echoing in my head. You know you can talk to me, right? Before I could respond, my phone buzzed. Victoria, remember our chat about institutions? That evening, I heard Mrs. Wilson next door. Mike, something's not right over there. I heard that woman telling Mary the most awful things. Victoria must have heard too, because next day she hosted a neighborhood tea party. Mary's going through typical teenage adjustment issues, she told everyone, voice dripping with concern. We're so worried about her stability. That night, I heard her on the phone. James, I hate to say this, but I found something disturbing in Mary's room. Yes, I think we should consider professional help. I lay in bed shaking when my door creaked open. Victoria's silhouette filled the doorway. Sweet dreams, Mary. Don't forget to use the bathroom before bed. Though it probably won't help, will it? Such a shame your father has to deal with a defective child. I pulled the covers over my head, trying to block out her words, but they seeped in like poison. The next morning, another wet bed, another smirk from Victoria, another piece of my confidence shattered. Dad, please. I tried one evening. Not now, princess. This merger is crucial. He hadn't called me princess in months. Victoria, can you handle this? Of course, darling. Her smile was perfect. Her eyes were empty. Mary and I will have a nice long chat about her behavior. Everything changed when Aunt Rachel showed up unannounced. Victoria was in the middle of one of her talks with me. If you breathe a word about our conversations, I'll make sure you never see your father again. Her grip on my arm was tight. Victoria, Mary, I'm here. Aunt Rachel's voice rang through the house. Victoria's face twitched before transforming into her perfect stepmother mask. Later that night, Aunt Rachel cornered me. Something's off, kiddo. You're not the same bubbly girl I knew. Before I could respond, my phone lit up with an unknown number. I'm Sophia, Victoria's sister. We need to talk. She's done this before. The next day at school, Mrs. Chen pulled me aside. Mary, Detective Martinez would like to speak with you. She's been investigating some... interesting patterns. The detective's words chilled me. Your stepmother has been married three times before, all to wealthy single fathers. Two of those husbands died under suspicious circumstances. That afternoon, I found Victoria's phone unlocked on the counter. My hands shook as I scrolled through messages. Wire transfer ready for Thompson account access. Previous death certificates cleared. James Thompson's company valuation complete. I quickly snapped photos with my own phone. Mrs. Wilson caught me in the driveway. Mary, we installed security cameras after hearing things. They caught something yesterday. Your stepmother's behavior. I have more, Mrs. Chen said during our next meeting. She spread out documents. Victoria Reed? Or should I say Victoria Maxwell? Or is it Victoria Blackwood? Three different identities, three wealthy husbands. I started keeping my phone recording whenever Victoria was around. It didn't take long. Poor little Mary. Did you really think James would choose you over me? Once I get access to his accounts, you'll be nothing but a distant memory in some state facility. You killed them, didn't you? The other husbands? I found my courage. She laughed coldly. Prove it. Who would believe a troubled, bedwetting teenager? What she didn't know was that Detective Martinez had fitted me with a wire. The Wilson's cameras caught her shoving me into walls when no one was looking. Mrs. Chen had documents proving her multiple identities. And Sophia... She murdered them, Sophia told Detective Martinez. Made it look like accidents. I was too scared to come forward before. I downloaded everything from Victoria's phone. Bank transfers, fake identity documents, emails about Dad's company. She was planning something big. Once this merger goes through, she purred to someone on the phone, not knowing I was recording. 
James Thompson won't know what hit him, just like the others. That night, I heard her in Dad's office accessing his computer. What she didn't notice was Detective Martinez outside, waiting. Everything was finally falling into place. The evidence was overwhelming. Financial fraud, identity theft, suspicious deaths, and hours of recorded abuse. Victoria Reed Thompson was about to learn that she'd picked the wrong family to destroy. The day everything exploded started with Victoria's smug smile at breakfast. She didn't know that Detective Martinez and the FBI were about to raid Dad's office, where they'd find her trying to wire millions to offshore accounts. Mary, your father won't be home tonight. Business dinner. She smirked. Actually, he will. I stood my ground. The FBI's there right now. Her face contorted. You little... The front door burst open. Dad stormed in, his face ashen. Victoria Reed Maxwell Blackwood or whatever your real name is. James, darling, what? Save it. The FBI showed me everything. The transfers, the previous husbands, the abuse of my daughter. You can't prove anything. She lunged for her phone, but I held up mine. Looking for your evidence? I backed it up weeks ago. Detective Martinez walked in. Victoria Reed, you're under arrest for fraud, identity theft, and the murders of Robert Maxwell and George Blackwood. You don't understand, Victoria pleaded to Dad. Mary's been lying. I heard the recordings. Dad's voice broke. I saw the videos. How could you do this to my daughter? Sophia testified first at the trial. She planned each marriage meticulously, targeted wealthy single fathers, isolated their children. Other victims came forward. Children from her previous marriages, speaking about the psychological torture. Financial experts tracking her fraud patterns. I'm so sorry, princess. Dad held me after court one day. I should have seen it. We both got fooled, Dad. Victoria's perfect mask crumbled as the judge read her sentence. Multiple life terms, no possibility of parole. This isn't over, she screamed as they led her away. I'll, you'll what? I stepped forward. Threaten me with an orphanage? I'm not scared of you anymore. The lawsuits from her previous victims bankrupted her. Every penny she'd stolen was returned. Her designer clothes were sold at auction. Dad and I went to therapy together. Movie night? he asked one Friday, just like old times. Four years later, I stood at a podium addressing other adopted kids. Your voice matters, your truth matters. Don't let anyone silence you. My story went viral. Victoria watched from prison as I graduated high school with honors, as I started a foundation for adopted children, as I thrived. Her last letter came on my 18th birthday. You ruined everything. I wrote back one line. No, Victoria. You did that all by yourself. Dad hung my acceptance letter to law school on the fridge, right next to a photo of us at my graduation. Proud of you, princess. The Wilsons still live next door. Mrs. Chen still counsels at my old school. Aunt Rachel visits more often. And me? I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Home, safe, loved. Victoria's serving four life sentences. Her perfect mask is gone, replaced by a prison uniform. Meanwhile, I'm preparing for law school, planning to specialize in adoption rights and fraud cases. Karma really is something, isn't it? What would you have done in my position? Stayed silent to keep your perfect family together? Or fought back knowing you might end up in an orphanage? I still sometimes wonder if I should have spoken up sooner. Share your thoughts in the comments. Your answers might help someone going through something similar right now. If my story touched you, please hit that like button and subscribe. There are more powerful stories of survival and justice coming your way. Together, we can show others they're not alone.